Welcome to the Debated Week, Part 2 of TNA and the booking going in 2016. Now, as you know, I already set up Awesome Kong as champ. And I know a lot of people say, are you serious? Why? Simple. She has the size, she has her credentials, and she's completely different than what we've seen on any promotion. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. The WWE, even if they had a large woman like a Havoc, would never let Havoc, if she was the best they ever had in a wrestler, a pure wrestler. In other words, she had great looks, she looked physically good, and she was physically strong, capable of actually taking on men. She could talk better than anyone. People cheered for her constantly, or they booed for her constantly. She had everyone coming in the seats. The WWE would never go with her. So with TNA, we have the option of actually seeing that. That's why, that's why in real life, she did the World Title Series. Of course, we know the World Title Series is over. We don't know the champion yet, but we know she went through the tapings going into it. So why not let her be champ? So what I'm going to do in this part two, I'm going to focus on her and the King of the Mountain title. The next one will be about the X Division and the tag titles. So let's do this right now. She is champ. In the beginning of the year, I'm going to the beginning of 2016 before Genesis. She's now champ. She won in December. And now she's seen on television. She speaks eloquently. <laughs> eloquently. And essentially speaking, EC3 is flabbergasted that he got his ass handed to her by him. Matt doesn't bother with her. He left it alone. But EC3, like I said in a previous video, he tried to wine and dine her and tried to get in bed with her. And you would think, well, chocolate and vanilla sounds good. She still doesn't fall for it and she kicks his ass. But she does get a feud out of it. She gets a feud with him and she gets a feud with Tyrus. Now, I put Tyrus in this situation because she already attacked him before. He didn't do anything to her, but he already attacked her before. And he already, he already bothered her, and she attacked him already twice. So eventually it had to happen that Tyrus would have to go up against the Awesome One. Now, I know you're going to say that Awesome Kong is way smaller than Tyrus, that he could easily beat her. Well, that's true. Until someone comes out to help her, that he is smitten with her, even though it's not 100% mentioned, but a few times during the two weeks that prior it, prior it. Now, I didn't say this in the previous video, but let's say that the Abyss, and I know throwing the Abyss in sounds kind of stupid, but the reason I would throw the Abyss in is because, let's say the Abyss seen her from afar, he doesn't generally talk, but he's seen a couple of times for the two weeks, and he's already smitten with her. Because he saw how beautiful she was and how freaking tough she was. So, as EC3 starts cheating to let Tyrus win, Abyss comes out. And the Abyss basically stops EC3 and then the Abyss and Tyrus goes nose to nose. And Awesome Kong basically kicks Tyrus in the nuts. And the Abyss looks at her, she looks at him. And they get a little kiss on. So the Abyss will be in the corner of the Awesome Kong. So they would do a couple of, let's say a couple of tag matches over about a three week period. EC3 would get a match with her because he does a couple of matches with some of the more prominent people there like Matt Hardy. And well, you could say Lashley, but Lashley is next. He tries to beat her and he does not. But essentially speaking, this is how she would go into Genesis. She would have a match with EC3 again for the title, and EC3 would get beaten while Tyrus and the Abyss is at ringside. Let's say the Abyss now becomes Kong's boyfriend. And he is basically the one that gets her anything she wants. He's smitten with her. He would do anything for her. And then that's when Lashley comes out. Lashley would be the one to try and speak some sense into Kong because he knew her for quite a long time. And then you have Lashley dealing with the Abyss. And I know that sounds like it's not going to be a good feud, but essentially speaking, it's not meant to be a good feud. It's meant to get Kong over. Because in the end, 
Kong must go up against Lashley. Someone who's a friend, someone she knows, and is a legitimate badass. And with the help of the Abyss, because let's be honest, Kong is a big ass tough woman, but I don't think she can stand a chance against Lashley in an actual fight. She needs help. So it would make sense that he would be involved and she can keep, keep the championship past Genesis going into lockdown. Now I'm going to leave it there because I don't really have an idea what I want to do next. But at least from December into December, I already have something for Kong. From December going into January, I have something for Kong. And going into February before lockdown, which would be in March. That's how I would book it. Now, the King of the Mountain title is the other half. That's going to be hard to describe because we know it's nothing. But here's where I think this would work. Robert Roode still has the title. And let's say that someone you would not expect to come back would come back and be working against Robert Root. Yeah, that'd be Jeff Jarrett. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you bring Jeff Jarrett back, GFW. No. GFW would not be involved in this. It would be Jeff Jarrett. And he would be bringing in a person that even though he's not a member of TNA anymore because he gave up his shares, he brokered the deal for this guy. And that would be Matt Morgan. Yes, I would bring Matt Morgan back for one simple reason. I always felt Matt Morgan had incredible potential, but they had no idea what to do with the guy. He was a freaking monster. And they did nothing with this man. So when it came down to it, excuse me, Matt Morgan would come back with Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett for about one month to two months would be his manager. And this is December of 2015. He wouldn't be in a tournament because he wouldn't qualify. But Matt Morgan would be going through everyone on the roster. He would go through Tigra Uno. He would go through Zima Ion. He would go through Manic. He would go through the Abyss, actually. That's how the starting of the Abyss dealing with Awesome Kong. Because she would see him and she would be kind enough to pick him up. Even though he got his ass kicked. And that would be the start of him caring about Kong. But Matt Morgan would go and tear through everybody. The only thing that he would be there for would be to just bring him in through the entrance. He would stay at the back, near the, near the back entrance, and he would not go down to the ring with him. He's not involved in it. He would just be there to give some type of credibility because it was Jeff Jarrett who was around what brought him in. He would talk for him a couple of times, but Matt Morgan would eventually get rid of him. In other words, he said, I'm on my own, I don't need you anymore. And he says, good luck to you, brother. And he leaves. And then Matt Morgan on his own from the late December into early January would keep going through the roster, even though it's very small. Eventually by Genesis, he would basically deal with Eli. And I'm not talking about Eli Drake. I'm talking about the Eli we like. Eric Young, because Eric Young was still dealing with Rude, who basically was boring at the time. But he completely destroys him, and Rude comes down to the ring and thanks him. But the Matt Morgan looks at him, the blueprint himself, looks at that title, pokes at it, and punches him in the face. The next week, we see him, he says, the reason that I punched Robert Rude in the face it's simple. That's my title. I don't like someone holding my title. The blueprint doesn't like people holding his possessions. I have torn through everyone without a problem because I am truly the genetic freak. And no one will stop me. I will succeed. I will control. And I will take this. And by the time that happened, we would have, by lockdown of March... A Robert Roode versus a Matt Morgan feud. This is how I would do it for the championship of the Awesome Kong going into lockdown because she had already gone through Lashley already. And Robert Roode dealing with Matt Morgan. But this is just my idea. 
What about you? And I hope you enjoyed this debate week. Please give me a comment below. I'll be getting the third one out. That will be about the tag belts and about the X division. You guys have a good day and have a good night. Peace out.